Around 25 years ago, Toyota first introduced the Prius, basically the first mass-produced hybrid car. Now, it was especially the second generation that was insanely popular. As you may remember, basically everybody in Hollywood wanted to have one because it was basically the first car that was popular because it was environmentally friendly and very economical. Now, ever since then, Toyota has been the front runner when it comes to hybrid cars, basically all models that you can get at Toyota, and there are quite a few you can get with a hybrid powertrain. But it has taken Toyota a long time to finally introduce a battery electric vehicle. And now it's here. This is the Toyota BZ4X, a very catchy name indeed. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about this first fully electric battery car by Toyota. I'm gonna to take you through the interior, the exterior, and we're gonna take this car out for a drive. At Toyota, you can get a lot of green powertrains. You can get a plug-in hybrid Toyota, a hybrid, even a hydrogen Toyota. Uh, that's the Toyota Mirai. But you couldn't get a battery electric car at Toyota. Until now, this is the BZ4X. And in the coming years, they will be introducing a lot of battery electric cars. Around 30 uh, before 2030, so a lot of cars. Now the name of the car, BZ4X, needs a little bit of explaining because it sounds basically like a password you use for a mill. And now BZ means beyond zero because zero emissions. Four means the size of the car and X means uh, the shape of the car, so it's an SUV. Now, what do I mean by four and the size of the car? Now, in the coming years, Toyota will be introducing seven BZ models. They will be forming a BZ family. And a four is, like I said, the size of the car. So that means they will also be introducing a five and a seven and a one and a two and a three. So smaller cars and also larger BZ models. All these BZ models basically will have this design at the front, so you don't get a traditional grille, obviously, but you do get this small strip that looks a little bit like a grille. And here are all the sensors integrated for the self-help drive systems. And you also get these slim headlights as well at the front. So this is the basic design that you get at the front end in the upcoming years for this BZ family. Now Toyota has been developing this car together with Subaru. Uh, at Subaru this car is called the Solterra, which is basically the same car as this BZ4X. However, it does look a little bit more robust than this car. All right, let's have a look at the back end of the car. Now what really stands out here in the back is not the long LED strip that you get that runs all the way across the back and also the small spoiler just on top of that, but mainly the big spoiler here on the roof. And it's not one spoiler, it's basically two spoilers or one spoiler split in two. Uh, they like to call this the bunny ears at Toyota, uh, which is a quite a funny name for a pretty funny looking spoiler. It actually looks quite cool. Now let's have a look at the uh, cargo space. Uh, this car is a little bit bigger than a RAV4. It's slightly longer, slightly wider. Uh, although it is a little bit lower, uh, the roof is a bit lower and also the hood as well. Now here in the back you get 425 liters of cargo space, which is plenty. Although I do have to say, you do get the sloping roof line, which makes the car look a little bit cooler. Because of that, the car looks a little bit like a coupe but it does make uh, loading a little bit harder here in the back, especially when you're trying to load big stuff here all the way in the back. But I do have to say, plenty of cargo space overall. Here in the back, uh, you don't get like a full floor that you can set in different heights, but you do get a little bit of a cubby space down here where you can leave your charging cables. So like you probably know by now, in electric cars, the electric motor doesn't take up much space. So that means you get a lot more interior space. So that means that here in the back, I am actually quite comfortable. I'm one meter 80, 180 centimeters. So not the tallest, but definitely not the shortest guy out there. But I do have plenty of space here. Of course, this seat is in the same position as how I would use it. And as you can see, I've got plenty of room left here for my knees. I do have to point out that the seats are quite low, which means that I can't put my feet under the seat, which is a bit of a shame. That is actually a little bit annoying. Now, these are the electrically operated seats. Maybe if you can get regular seats, if possible, I assume they are, uh, they are a little bit higher up, but I'm not sure on that. So don't quote me on that. 
Uh, in the middle, of course, you got an armrest with two cup holders and a little bit of a cubby uh, hole for your uh, mobile phone. And here on this particular version, I've got heated seats here in the back, two USB-C ports and two air vents as well. I'm gonna discuss the interior in just a second, but I can't imagine by now you really wanna know the specifications of this car, so let's start with that. In the floor of the car, you get a 71 kilowatt hour battery pack. There's no other option, at least not at this moment. And the car has a maximum range of 516 kilometers. Now this car you can have with front wheel drive or all wheel drive. I'm driving the all wheel drive version and this car can do up to 470 kilometers. So a little bit less. However, that's still not bad, especially from a 71 kilowatt hour a battery, 516 kilometers or 470 is definitely not bad. Now, charging the car can do uh, up to 11 kilowatts, uh, three phase, uh, and fast charging it can do up to 150 kilowatts. So that's not amazing. Uh, of course, there is some competition, especially from South Korea, that have cars that can charge a lot faster, a lot quicker. Uh, for example, the EV6, Ionic 5. However, Toyota says that this car can maintain uh, the higher charging speed of 150 kilowatts for a longer time, so it won't dip when it charges for up to 40% or 50%. It will maintain uh, the higher charging speed for a longer time. So this car will charge the battery from zero to 80% in around 30 minutes, which is basically what most cars can do. So it is on par with the competition. So then let's talk power output. Now, if you go for the front wheel drive version, you get, of course, one electric motor at the front axle. If you go for this all wheel drive version, you get two electric motors that together produce 228 horsepower. Now the top speed for both versions is 160 kilometers an hour. Then let's talk about the interior. Uh, you get this really special digital gauge cluster in front of you. It's really far away. It's almost up to the windscreen. And that means that I have to look over the steering wheel at the seat screen uh, just like with modern Peugeot models uh, and just with modern Peugeot models uh, you really have to make sure that the steering wheel is in the right position that your seat is in the right position otherwise you're just looking at the steering wheel but if you have done all that it is actually quite a pleasant experience because you don't really have to take your eyes off the road anymore you just lower them a little bit and then you can immediately see at the digital gauge cluster in front of you in the center you got this pretty big screen that is pretty fast you can really notice that it has a lot of computing power uh, especially when you zoom out the navigation map quite quickly uh, which is basically the stress test on systems like this you can notice that it doesn't need any time to react it's just very fast indeed also if you open the manuals everything opens instantly uh, making this a very pleasant system to use even a very safe system to use because you don't need extra time to wait for menus to open time that you have to spend watching the screen because you just tick on something it opens and you can just move on with your journey now how does the car drive well, i'm actually pleasantly surprised by the ride quality it's a pretty comfortable car but at the same time it's a pretty fun car to drive as well um, I shouldn't be that surprised because Toyota models have been really fun lately uh, to drive, not just the, the GR uh, fun sports car models, but also uh, regular Toyota models uh, have become quite fun to drive. Also with this fully electric car, it is pretty fun to drive, but still also very comfortable. It is obviously a pretty heavy car, but if you go for this uh, four wheel drive version, you can hardly notice it. It uh, has plenty of power, plenty of torque, uh, so you don't even so you don't even notice it that much that you're driving a pretty heavy car. So those are my first impressions uh, with the first fully battery electric car by Toyota. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And then I'll see you in the next one.